as usual. Uh, Dobbo, just to start, uh, obviously exciting news this week that we've got a clean sheet COVID-wise. Um, that obviously is good news that we don't have any positive tests, but also shows that we are, you know, following protocols and everyone's doing what, what they should. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's credit to the medical staff. You know, we're training with a big squad of almost 60 guys. Obviously, the training's increased dramatically when it changed from the groups of five a few weeks ago. So to get away with zero tests over that period, yeah, over the last few weeks is brilliant. So we're really chuffed with where we are with that. Uh, the medical staff yeah. have done a good job. And then, obviously, the, the news this week, or the confirmation of, you know, the dates and, the, and the, where we're playing and who we're playing, uh, it was obviously very exciting for everyone. Now it's kind of clear what, we, what we're doing and, and, and we're going to progress our training. So what's that been like in camp this week? Yeah, we actually took um, the week before last, the last week off because, you know, we weren't, we weren't sure when we were playing. It was becoming a sort of an endless preseason, you know. Um, uh, so, yeah, we went on a small camp, took a week off to get the energy. Now it actually works out perfectly because I think, you know, we're going to be playing mid-October in serious competition. So that gives, gave us another sort of four or five week block of preseason. And obviously having another friendlies next week, uh, suddenly playing against some familiar foes has brought a massive amount of energy to the group. Uh, so it feels like, yeah, it feels much more goal and purpose driven and, and engaged. All right. And then maybe if you can just give guys an insight into our 20 minute truckers that we're having at Newlands tomorrow, we can have a couple of them joining us. Um, what the okay. idea is there and how we're progressing our training. Yeah, so we're playing for a thing called the COVID, the COVID Cup tomorrow. The two teams um, playing three chuckers. Um, oh, I should have had a picture of the cup here. It's downstairs. But uh, um, actually, maybe I shouldn't have had a picture of the cup. It's quite phallic. But it's, um, it's, uh, it's um, the Boulders, Bay, Pe Bold, Boulders, Boulders Beach Penguins against the Devil's Peak Dussies. So the team's basically divided into two. We've got quite a big squads of about close to 30 players. 20 minute chuckers and sort of match practice, sorry riffs, and we'll get some, we'll go full bone on bone, full contact. We just thought you can't go into games, but you know, at, at, at altitude against a super rugby team without having some, you know, re really, really good match simulation. So that's what the chuckers tomorrow are about. And we just try to make it, you know, I think it's good for us to do it in front of an empty stadium because uh, we're going to get used to that. It's a nice surface. The team, to, what we did was instead of just making like an all trial, we tossed jerseys at each other uh, at various guys or go possible versus problems. We mixed everybody up. They trained separately the last two days. They've got their own captains. The coaching staff's been divided. So um, we just sort of quite useful that Hanyani Shimangi double, doubles or trebles as both the, the coach of the coach of the Penguins, the mascot of the Penguins, and the logo. So um, <laughs> that was again, and then. Uh, and then the Dussies with Rita, and so we, it's, it's, we're trying to make a bit of fun. And it is a cup, and we'll have a, uh, we'll have some fun afterwards, hopefully. So try and give us a really nice something that the guys enjoy, as well as most importantly, getting their bodies ready for next Saturday. Yeah, and then obviously you say it's going to be an empty stadium, but we will have a couple media there up at uh, level eight in the media suite. Um, <laughs> so so that'll be good as well to to get these guys at Newlands again. Yeah, just close the catering in the bar for when we play, so they come out and watch it, and then they can go back. <laughs> no, it'd be great. To, you know, it's really nice if you guys come and see. Cause I think it's going to be, it's going to be a yeah. It's just be nice to see some live rugby at Newlands, you know. So I think that, if nothing else, and I say the teams will be doing. It won't be a, it won't be a stuff around. The guys will be up. Okay, cool. And, and then just lastly, yeah. just lastly from me, Dobbo. Um, you know, this year as we've seen sport go mm -hmm. back. Uh, from from the pandemic, racism's been a big focus. Uh, it's obviously something that we we've needed to address and address internally in the squad. So I just wanted you to maybe explain how we're going about kind of educating and um, and having conversations around that within our, our squad. Uh, look, I, I've got no clue what, if anything, of what's happening or what directives are coming or around what's happening around. Which I suppose the first official occasion, which will be Marvel uh, and the Marvel with the super the super hero day uh, next week. So, but I think we we decided as a group, speaking to the sort of senior players a while ago, that this is something we wanted to address anyway because we are. I think we're an amazingly diverse and unified and cheerful team, and guys are really tight across all sorts. Of, you know, it, it's really exciting. You know, it's not just about color, people of, of, of different color, you know, you've got different background, the diversity 
comes in the fact that Samama Rutt, for example, is from Paul Boys High. It's not meant to be like that. You know, you either meant to be a player of color from somewhere else or from Paul Boys. And I, he's both. So that's this diversity thing is something we're really, really proud of. And so what we wanted to do was really go really hard on education and understanding. So whatever directive comes our way, whether it's, it's whether I'm not sure, I really don't know. Is it going to be handed down to the provinces? Is it going to be handed down to individuals? Is it going to be a directive from somewhere else? We, we, we started a series of talks, uh, both internally and with outside facilitators, just to increase education and understanding so that at least this team will stay together no matter what happens. They will understand if somebody takes a contrarian view, whether that contrarian view is something that's manifest on the field, I hope not, but if it is, that's fine. At least somebody, you know, I, I will understand whether the guy next to me is on a knee or I'm on a knee and the guy next to me is standing, if it gets to that. Hopefully we don't. Consensus in the subject is so thorny, it's going to be very hard to reach. We're certainly doing our best, and that would be the nirvana of where we're trying to get to. So we've had a series of talks, and we're carrying on with them next week, and we'll carry on with them after Marvel. I think what is clear to us as a group is that this is an opportunity, not a threat, for us to increase understanding. So that's really, really important for us. And that it carries on beyond whatever the aesthetics of Marvel. That the fact that the Bristol Bears hearts or that sort of thing, those opportunities of sort of, I don't want to be disrespectful, but option B's or plan C's are probably no longer on the table and all possibly the right thing for the group. The right thing for the group is that we have a greater level of education, understanding every, everybody's viewpoint. So that's, that's what we work on. Where that process ends, and it certainly doesn't end next Saturday by any stretch. This is something that's have to go throughout the season. And I actually think if it's properly done and properly bought into, and I think our, the Springbok skipper here has been absolutely mag magic, uh, that it's an ongoing thing for us. And Sia just said to the team, you know, chaps, no matter how this goes in these sessions, he's not talking about the field or the, the aesthetics, I'm not going to judge you, but I want to be able to understand you and everything like that. So I think, uh, yeah, we, we, we're seeing this as a, as a really exciting opportunity. And I'm pleased we started it last week and this week and next week and the week after Marvel, just because I think it's really important for South African sporting society and all society, to be honest. Perfect. Thanks, Dobbo. Uh, I think we can turn it over to you guys now if you've got any questions from. Dobbo, if I may just continue on, on that last line that you were talking about. Would it be easier if there's a director from Saru, like happened in the English Premier League, where it was just decided everybody's taking a knee, everybody's got this Black Lives Matter logo on their jerseys? Mm -hmm. Or do you think it's better that each individual team and player decides on their own? Look, as aesthetically, I, I, I would say a directive and probably fairer on the players in some ways is a directive because it looks more palatable because we don't want the situation what happened in sale. But I, 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 you know, the last thing you want to do is, I, I think, is force somebody on their feet or force somebody onto their knees. And um, I want to have this understanding of... Um, so say we get a directive that player um, if he feels that strongly about not doing or doing whatever he's meant to do is good it's just he's just going to look and 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 if he does that i want his teammates and everybody to understand not agree with or whatever understand understand it so you know in some ways i i i don't I, i'm actually uh, whether the directive or not doesn't really interest me um, and if it's left down to the players it doesn't really bother me as long as there's this level of understanding of where each other are coming from it might sound naive Ashfaq but um, you know I don't know what the rights are or the wrongs are you, you know if you say it's up to each player you're putting the guys under enormous stress because uh, they may know and um, if there is a directive then you're forcing let's say the directive is to stand on your stand, which it hopefully wouldn't be, but let's say the directive is to stand, then you, then you, then you forcing up guys who want to sit to stand. And I think that's, I think that's, that puts a whole nother, another realm of pressure on it. So literally our approach is educate and understand what the situation is and keep going with it. What happens next Saturday afternoon in terms of directives, I, I can't comment. So I haven't answered your question, but I'm just saying that our approach. Dobber on the rugby. Uh, how's it, by the way? Um, on 
on the game next week, do you think uh, your opposition... <laughs> <laughs> my, that's just a joke. <laughs> you don't have to answer that, Dobby. <laughs> um, no, just uh, in terms of uh, preparation, I mean, it's been the weirdest season. You've had like, like two pre-seasons, three pre-seasons probably, uh, readiness to play in terms of game game situation. Um. I think we're massively scared of injury, is the truth. Uh, just, I don't think, uh, what does a schoolboy season end in September or whatever? It's probably not since school they've gone, if, if it's school, they've gone seven, six, six and a half months like this. And then to go straight into some pretty full on games, you know, uh, it's going to be, that's, 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 I think as a coaching group, that's our major fear uh, is injury. I mean, watching tomorrow is going to be tough from that point of view, watching Superior, watching Green and Gold. It's, it's going to be, you know, we saw the stats from Bundesliga when they went back, the various other competitions. You've seen what's happened in Europe. You've seen what happened in New Zealand. So I think the players' concern, they're really keen to play mentally, but also really worried about, um, about, about, about the injury. And, you know, we, we pushed as far as we could to the last two or three weeks to try and get as close as we could within the regulations. You know, it's very hard to scrum with a mask on and maul with a mask on properly. You know, it's uh, um, it's it, yeah, that's probably our biggest our biggest concern. You know, both the national cause and the cause of our campaign. We just got all our guys with Peter Steph still got an injury cloud, but the rest are still fit. And then just to see, you know, poor old let's say for example, Sia Khaleesi, his his first game was the game against the Hurricanes on the first his last game, his only game was 38 minutes. So since the World Cup final, which you date you'd all remember, and got tattooed as the second of November, or whatever it was, uh, uh, he's since then, and we're going to what uh, late September, ten months, thirty-eight minutes. It's not an ideal situation in terms of injury profile, you know. So that's our big concern. Yeah. But obviously, we want to play cheaper. That's mm-hmm. what we are. Happy Thanks. birthday for yesterday, Craig. Thanks, John. <laughs> Dada, um, are you? Uh, you know the, the way to get around that is to manage the workload of your of your players. Um, how many? How many? How, how big is the squad that you take to Loftus? I think we limited. I think we limited by um, by COVID uh, anyway for the regulations of the ground. I'm still waiting for that. I think Emmanuel's just come through this morning from SA Rugby, but yeah, we that also got other limitations. So yeah, probably 25 or 26. Uh, I think the green and gold is 30 and 30 the week after. So that is a yeah, that is a that is a concern. Uh, um, you know, ideally, we'd like to have 30-something up there. But I say, you know, you've got... I, I really don't know the details, but I presume you've got two games in the same venue. That's also going to have COVID restrictions and requirements. So we're working on around 25 at the moment. Hopefully, it's going to be a couple more. Okay. And just, just the other thing, I mean, when you're playing as the Stormers at Marvel Day, I'm assuming you're going to play as Province after that. Or am I, am I wrong? Well, Gavin, we're just waiting to hear what competition we're playing first. Then we'll know what team plays in that competition. You're not, you're not that far yet. Okay. Well, it's not us. It's it's oh. sorry. You know they need to they need to make. They said they would clarify uh, soon, but yeah, we don't know that yet. Okay. And okay. And, and just on that line, are you guys playing the, the the entire whatever competition it is, whatever they want to call it? Are you going to play the, the the whole thing at at Newlands? I mean, right through to the 16th of January. It's not. It's yeah. not going to go to Cape Town Stadium all the way through the year. Okay. No, 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 no. We have Newlands, yeah. Okay. And and maybe just maybe we'll have we'll have fans right at the end of that comp, which would be good. I hope so. <laughs> Robert, ask Peter Steph uh, coming along. When do you expect him ready? Um, and then just your thoughts on uh, concept of the, uh, the the game coming up, the green and gold, and all that. Uh, Quite a unique concept. Um, can you just give us your thoughts on that as well, please? Yeah, uh, Peter Steff. Um, yeah, it's, it, look, he's not. He's not. Um, he's not. He's not ready yet. Uh, and the truth is, we don't know when he'll be ready. Um, he's got that injury. You know, you know, we we talked about this when it happened in March. Um, of the forty-two guys in the world have had that, twenty-one have had amputations. You know, so. It was predicted to be a six a six a, 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 a six month injury. There's a nerve in that muscle which was damaged that sort of that sort of protects your knee. I don't know the name; begins with an N. 
and that nerve is the muscle around that nerve is not growing back fast enough. So we're, we, we are on a three to four week cycle now and it is showing signs of growth. So our hope is that he only misses the first two games. Uh, it could be a blow if the Springboks are leaving at the end of October, you know, um, but he's not going to make the start. Uh, but he's training full out. I mean, he's training properly. He's, well, there's no so panic stations. It's just that he's not going to be, he certainly won't be ready for Marvel and probably not for, well, no, he won't be ready for Marvel and, and not our first two, two games. But I, I just know my experience like with Ramon Samuels and a couple of other guys over my coaching career, nerve, nerves are often open-ended injuries. You know, they just start regrowing and regenerating. So the doctors, you know, it's hard, I put him under pressure, it could be an exact date, but I suspect it's going to be certainly towards the back end of October, best. And the other question was, Stephen, again? Other than Peter um, Steph, you asked I assume, I assume uh, you, you're mentioning your first two interprovincial games, and then the uh, second uh, question was just about the concept that Issa Rapey came up um, with the game. Green and the, gold one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, listen, um, you know, one of the things that uh, I thought really good in the rugby industry over this period was the lack of rumour. Because it's, you know, when there's so little information and so much chaos and so much crisis, you often hear the rumours. And I think we did really well in rugby, not Western province, but South African rugby to stop uh, unnecessary speculation. And there was generally a buy-in for whatever's good for the game. And if this game is good for the rugby economy or our relationship with the broadcaster or the sponsors or whatever format this thing is, then we're very comfortable with it. I mean, obviously, I'd like to keep our players and keep working with them. But I think there really has been a roll up your sleeves because every day it's changed. And through nobody's fault. So, um, yeah, we, yeah, the idea of it looks it's nice that it's at Newlands. Um, from our squad point of view, we view it that it's more game time for Kitsi, more game time for Sia, whoever they choose. Um, and it's whatever's needed to get this rugby economy, you know, the rugby thing going back. And if it helps the broadcaster, then we're completely fine with it. Um, again, we were watching it from uh, with, you know, half an eye because of injuries, but that we would, would be the same if we were playing a friendly. Oh, but just throwing it forward a bit, um, you know, if the Springboks do go to rugby championships, they're going to take like 45 players with them because they, because of quarantines and, you know, COVID protocols, which means you could be, you could have like 10 or 15 players from your squad for whatever competition you're playing in gone. Um, so again, like how does that impact on your planning right now? Because you really, you know, you could start with one group now and in a few weeks time have a completely different group. Are you, are you sort of, is that a contingency plan in your preparation? Uh, we, about, about six weeks ago, we pulled up a whole lot of the under 21s because under 21s are training at City Park, keep us separate because of the COVID protocols. And we transferred them across here in preparation for that. Because I think, I think you know, there's still, a, there's still a, I don't think you guys might know more that that test window is absolutely confirmed or it is confirmed, but the French and the English, it was French leading the charge, are fighting against it. And let's the French clubs win. And there are no overseas box. I mean, I expect our numbers of players coming from this union to be in the high teens. You know, it could well yeah. be in the high teens, certainly in the mid teens. And um, so we have to prepare another team. You know, so for example, when that green and gold game goes happens, we're going to have to need another, another friendly for those guys who could actually play seven, eight, nine rounds of this tournament. Of which names that, with respect, as well as informed you all are that we probably haven't heard of. You know. Uh, look, you know, it's a good opportunity to blood guys. Uh, it'll make the competition a bit harder for us because, and then it comes down to some of the things like the draw, you know, when, you know, who do you play when those guys are away and who do you play when you're at full strength, you know? So it's going to make it tougher for us and certainly, you know, certainly for a team like the Sharks as well, I would imagine would lose quite a big, quite a few numbers. And, you know, some of the other teams, maybe not, you know, so... It is a challenge for us, but it, it would certainly put, they've been exceptional the way they train and certainly going to put the union in a greater state, a greater, greater state going forward. But then again, we don't want this to be another development curry cup. We want this to be the proper thing, you know, so it's going to be a challenge. And of course, the other option is the Springboks don't go to the rugby championships and you'll be at full strength all the way through, which I suppose for you would be first prize. Yeah, but yeah, it's, 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 it, 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 we, we both know that the, the, the arguments here are so strong on both sides. The, the, in case, the input from the rugby economy and that sort of stuff, then you've got the concern. You don't want to dilute this amazing brand. You want to be the, still the world champions when you play the British Lions, not having gone through traumatic. Because if, if we do, and there's rumour, and I haven't seen the final fixture list, that we've got to buy in the first game uh, of this tournament. And I say I haven't seen an official fixture, but it's just a rumour. If we have got to buy in the first game, um, 
our Springboks could have only played one Curry Cup game before going to go play it against these New Zealanders have played 10 rounds of yeah. that competition. They may have played a couple of Bidders like Cups and they played a North-South game, you know. Um, and that's going to make it really tough for the national team, but we need the money. So, you know, the feeling... Yeah. <laughs> well, just you know, money in you know, principle. Yeah. Dabo, yeah, do you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Just talking about the young guys you mentioned. Uh, let's say uh, that scenario happens, and 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 you you obviously can't get uh, the uh, you. These young guys that you have to blood. I saw some of the photographs of the guys training. A guy like Angelo Davids. Um, I just wanted to know: Is he eligible to play with the Stormers, or is he with the with the Sevens, or what? What is the situation regarding regarding him? Oh yeah, and uh, no, Angelo, we've got to deal with him for the Curry Cup. Um, it would have ended, you know, in time for the Sevens home legs. Uh, obviously, those aren't happening, so we could probably extend him a little bit. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think even Wellington and uh, um, uh, Australian League are happening next year. So we'll have Angelo. Uh, he's an exceptional wing. You know, I must say that these youngsters that we've got here uh, are really, really exciting. Um, you know, uh, Swell and the centre, David's the wing. Uh, Tristan Lates is coming on phenomenally. It's it's going to be, it's going to be a really good. Uh, we've got these young flops, that's Shooter and Mostert. We've got. Uh, I could go through the whole lot, but you know, Leon Lyons, the prop, Quinza below the, it's Sazi Sunday, the tight head, uh, Mazabuka, the tight head, uh, David Mies in the lock that Scotland are prepared to throw fortunes at to try and get him across there. Um, some really good young loose forwards. Uh, Nama, it, it, so it's going to be great for us if we can blood, but I just think we need a really tough curry cup. But let's say, if, it's, if they do say 23rd of January, the Springboks will be back in December. So maybe if we can just hang around with these youngsters and get ourselves in the playoffs, the Springboks are back, we could be there. Yeah. Robert, uh, you mentioned obviously the, the fear of injuries. Uh, just for your medical team, I mean, how challenging has it been to condition the guys? I mean, it's been a pre-season that's completely unusual and you've been able to do certain amounts of training and then not, and then a short amount of contact. I mean, just how have you more or less got the guys ready to go back into competition now? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a concern. Even, even um, this week after the week off, we took some, uh, we took, we took some, we took a bit of a few, a few knocks or a few tweaks. And we were doing, a, like I think Jake also suggested, a radical amount of hamstrings before because the guys hadn't been used to running on grass. We've got more challenge here in that we've been training and really, I mean, it's the most rainfall we've had in this region for seven or eight years. So our fields have been really heavy and cold and uh, uh, it's rained all the time. I mean, Monday, when we did a high speed running this week, it was pissing, sorry, it was pouring with rain and the grass is really thick. And now we're going to play in a tournament that could hit, you know, the high 30s on really, really fast fields around the country, you know. So I would say our preparation you know, even for us to go to, you know, we know that the field, you know, we know what loft just looks like next in at this time of year. Our, 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 us going up there is going to be a challenge for us just in terms of the injuries, especially the soft tissue stuff. Um, and later on, obviously, heat's going to become a problem. And then we've got the fact that these bodies aren't contact fit. So it is a red, red light. It, 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 and we couldn't manage COVID. What's it, wasn't there a book one day because there's also some rugby, you know. It's, we're dealing with so much other stuff at the moment. It's, it, 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 you know, rugby seems to be low down on the list, but it is a concern. Double, um, uh, just in terms of that, uh, playing on a, on a quick, uh, fast pitch pace could actually suit you guys, considering the type of personnel they have and, and perhaps our province and the Stormers would like to play normally, but sometimes the weather derails that kind of approach, a more positive approach. Yeah, I think I think it's a fair point. I think Newlands in winter is a tough place. I mean, for years, you know, Alistair and, and Flecky used to get a hard time about not scoring four tries. You know, you could have the Springboks All Blacks at Loftus and the score in the bad days could have been 50, 30, 20. The same game at Newlands is 12-3, you know. So, um, I think us getting that, that that's be good for us. I think we've worked... There were two things we took out of the lockdown in our defence. We were, I think, we had conceded the least points in, in Super Rugby up until lockdown. But certainly, we knew we hadn't got fluidity on attack, and uh, you know, certainly our territory thing. So, 
Uh, and territory also, you know, that, that surface also helps territory. You've got to chase the ball fast. The ball's got to travel distance and it's got to bounce fast. So I think, yeah, we, we're looking forward to it. You know, we've worked really hard on our attack and, you know, and, and the personnel there is going to change a little bit. So, you know, we've got Warwick coming in. You know, we're going to look at a guy like, a guy like giving Llewellyn Zast needs an opportunity. Um, we've got Rickus Pretorius. Obviously, Jamie Roberts is no longer here. We've worked incredibly hard with Damien at 10. You know, it's one thing for us to sit back and say Damien's, you know, has a poor this, that before lockdowns. Our job as coaches to coach him, you know, and, uh, you know, I want to give him opportunity and a backing. And I think there's opportunity for him at national level as well. That's just my summation. It's not uh, something I've heard officially. But so, you know, and having Herschel back from injury, we can try and get some high speed rugby and hopefully some territory as well. Uh, Dobby, you mentioned you mentioned Rickus. Is how's how's Dan? Duplicy. Yeah, that's the, yeah. So Ruan Nell's got a hamstring. He's out for a couple of weeks, um, and that's again based on the what I think what um, uh, I think it was Ashfaq who questioned it. That's based on the training conditions. You know, just trying to make up grass running at high speed, changing direction. He got a hamstring. Dan's a hundred percent, and I'm really. I mean, I think those two. Are, We've got some. He's. Got, he, we all know that if Dan Duplessis stays fit, that's a very, very special rugby player, and we know that Rickus is a guy with a huge future. So that's a really exciting combination for us. And they, they're not small boys, but they're really skilled. That sounds exciting. Abu, um, who else do you have um, in the midfield there? Um, now that Ruan's out um, with with Dan and and Rickus as well. So we got Dan Rickus. Um, We've got Monidia Zwillin Daba from under 21s, who I think is going to be a, a massive contributor to South African rugby going forward. Um, we've got a bloke called uh, Matt Moore. He came from, he's from St. Andrews, Eastern Cape. Um, he spent a, couple, a year or two at Munster, who's training really, really well. Cornell Smith from Stellenbosch. And then the guy that probably, are the, probably the most obvious and the next guy in is a guy called, or you've heard of, Michael Hasner. Uh, he was a great quiz. He's played a couple of games for us and he's tough. He's physical. And so, you know, he's probably the first guy in. And then we've got those youngsters like Swellen Darba, Moore and uh, Cornell Smith. So we were really worried about centre at the start of the year because Dan Dup was injured. That's when we got Jamie in. You know, obviously Swellen Darba and those guys went through as he was injured. So we actually really well off at centre now. Really well off at the backs. You know, we didn't have one injury in those first six rounds in the backs, which was unusual. We were going for a 6-2 split. So one of the mistakes I probably made was not create enough opportunities for a Rickus, for a Zas. So now we wanted to use this tournament to do that because, you know, when Zas, if you remember when Zass, it was six Super Rugby tries or seven Super Rugby tries in his first season, he's back in training really well. Um, Angela Davids, Edward van der Merwe, Michael Lesner, Zwellen Daba, Christopher Schroeder, the fly-off, Timo Sweel. It's, it's, it's um, really exciting what we got in the backs there. We need to create opportunities for them now. But just um, lastly, yeah, um, it, it's it's been um, what six, seven, seven, eight months of, of nothing. Um, obviously, the guys have have been sitting around for for the first two or three months of, of the lockdown. Um, you've mentioned that you guys have had um, uh, uh, doctors um, speaking to to the guys during your zooms and stuff like that, but. Has that uh, did that continue over the last um, couple of months that that you guys have been able to train? The what the what the, the which the, would, would uh, you, a psychologist or, or oh guys yes yes I know. I know we've since since we allowed the groups of five lates we've gone into pretty much normal operational mode. You know when the guys got into groups of five, um, Mike would have been and seen the whole thing changed. Even though they weren't all together. We got into, yeah, you know, so then we started to work on much more normal psychological stuff like leadership, game management, uh, um, emerging leaders, game drive, you know, the stuff that we'd normally work on going. We got into, when the groups of five started, we pretty much got into preseason mode. We just didn't expect the preseason to be quite so long, which is why we took that one week's break. And what we did do was um, last week, and all, all protocols observed, we, we had a sort of two day camp after a training session. and. Uh, Then the guys have been, to, it was the first time the guys were together in a group. So, so, and that brought massive energy to it. And yeah, so now we had, so the last, the last six weeks have been really pre, normal preseason. Yeah, so we didn't stick around with it. Yep. So, the, um, the, 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 you've been 
you've had a lot of time to, to, to focus on things that maybe you wouldn't have, we, we, we don't get a chance to focus on in a normal sort of rugby conveyor belt, um, like core skills and things. Uh, will we see a noticeable improvement on that? Because there, there has been, I know that, look, I mean, the guys in Durban tell me that there's been a huge upskilling there. Um, just, just when I'm talking about skilling, I'm talking about the, the core skills, the things that, yeah. you know, guys that needed work in certain areas have done that work now. And, uh, you know, guys that might have had a weakness in, say, box kicking have now sorted that out. I mean, will we, will we see that with you guys? I mean, have you had, have you had that sort of noticeable progression? No, oh, definitely. I mean, that's the one thing we could have done, Gavin, from the start was the guys went off with shadow balls, which are these balls that bounce back off a wall at funny angles and balls on elastics and cricket net roofs for the box kickers and stuff like that. The one thing we could do, we call it, you know, you got, we, we used to call it our deficits and, our, and your X. So deficits is the skill that the skill that you needed to work on. X was your party tricks, you know, so some guys might be a chicken wing offload and he's got to make his party trick really good. So that's the one thing we really have held them accountable for. Other than that, before we got into the groups of five was that, that the removal of deficits. So you listed the stuff that you needed to work on skill wise and that had to be removed by the time we got back together and your party trick had to become better. So that, that, that's that been a, hopefully across all South African rugby that, that we're going to see, that's where we're going to see some sort of excitement, especially with the ball. Because I mean, the guys, they're going to struggle at home to to do more snaps or um, you know, tackle technique or that sort of stuff. The skill you talk about is the traditional, you know, the magic, the hand, that sort of stuff, the hand eye stuff. We did it, we did a whole Cheryl Calder course so I really, I really am hoping that that would be better. I mean, I, I don't want to sound too, but the way we've trained, I, you know, we would, my view is other than set piece, because we only really got into that late, um, we would beat us the, of March. You can all snigger and say a lot of people would have, but uh, uh, we were doing really well. Yeah, we, 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 the way we're training now is considerably superior to how we were training in March in terms of skill and intensity and that sort of stuff, which is good. Bobo, on that, uh, you, you you haven't won a game for seven months. Um, are you uh, are you uh, are you quite keen just to get back on the field and you know because you started the season so well and then you know it kind of uh, you lost a couple of games and then you couldn't bounce back and how frustrating in a way has that been like sitting on that sort of on the I mean, you can't I always you know, we always say we can't lose buys and um, so we've been unbeaten for seven months now and uh, you guys. <laughs> But, uh, um, the uh, you know it's always cut to go into a normal buy a week buy without uh, on, a, on a defeat and you know we went on the back of two um, and so I mean that's frustrating in terms of you know walking around town you feel embarrassed and you feel cuck about the brand and you let the union down all that sort of stuff but what it did give us was massive introspection into our game and I I, I can say that even if we'd lost even if we'd won, we would have still, and I'm sure a team like they were doing so well, like the Sharks, I'm sure they've had a good look at their game, picked up out what didn't work. What it, I promise you, when you've lost two in a row, you go really deep. Maybe you go too deep in some ways. So we took everything, you know, from our culture, training methods, training days, times, recovery systems, territory game, uh, personnel, everything we've pulled apart, you know. And I'm really excited for the changes we made. And I don't think if we had lost the, the look, I'd still like prefer to win it. We would have gone to quite the same level. Yeah. Yeah, we might have been a little bit cock a hoop. So I, I, I've got no doubt whatsoever that we are going to be a better team than we were before. Uh, um, the only the, the only sort of question mark I've got is it's going to be the team that probably has managed the physiology of it the best. You know, so um, who can keep their guys on the field without getting injured? And they, that's a for me, it's, we've never been in this period before. You know, the Lions have got a really good conditioning guys. Their coach, he may have got that better than we've got it. I don't know. Uh, we're going to find out. That's my concern. But in terms of everything else, I think we've made a, a real improvement. I mean, it's hard. It's hard when you're sitting here, and, like it's in. We're in September, and I was at Kings Park in March, and it feels like another another lifetime ago. So you've got to sit here and actually really think about it. Like, what were the weaknesses then? And I think you did speak about it maybe a week or two afterwards. Uh, I'm assuming that you guys have done quite a lot of work on your, on your kicking game. No, yeah, that's been our... You know, we, I think those last two games, Gavin, which we lost, the, the, the Sharks and the Blues, were one, one was 38% territory and one was 39% territory. And I, you know, that, that big pack, especially Springbok laid and are used to playing in the right parts of the field, and that's where they get their energy from the, being close to the opposition 22. 
uh, they weren't enjoying that being being around there. So, you know, the way Stephen Kitsoff carries outside out 22 versus him carrying in their 22 is two different carries. So that was our biggest takeaway, and that's where we've worked probably the most. Our kicking system, simplifying it, our getting our chase right, and uh, and um, up, excuse, upskilling, you know, the likes of Herschel, Godlin, Damien. So that's probably been our, our, our biggest part of our game change. All right, guys. I think that's enough for today. Uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have Dobbo after the game tomorrow, so we can catch up with them afterwards. For those of you that are gonna be at Newlands, yeah. I think Nani had one. Nani, did, uh, did you have one or we done? Yeah. What What are you expecting from tomorrow? Obviously, we're all excited. I almost. We lost him. So excited, he's frozen. <laughs> exactly, Mikey. We lost you, Nani. No. Okay, yeah, thanks, Dobo. Thanks, okay. Mikey. Sorry, Danny. Thanks, boys. Ciao. Thanks, guys. All thanks, right, guys. Yeah, thank right. you. Thanks, guys.